everybody. <laughs> Happy Tuesday! It's Mrs. Grass from Art Ventures at Home from the studio at Galley North. Welcome to another episode of Art Ventures at Home. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're flattening the curve. I hope you're washing your hands. I hope you're doing well self-distancing and I hope you're enjoying our very special episodes of Art Ventures at Home. Today, I am so excited and thrilled to be introducing another guest artist, the incredibly talented Miss Megan. All right, Miss Megan, Megan Flaherty, she's a teacher with us at the studio at Gallery North. She teaches our homeschool group and teen programs. She's with us throughout the school year and most importantly, she joins us every summer for our Art Ventures summer program. Yeah, we love it. So uh, she is sharing a really special project with you today. I'm super excited about it. Uh, take it away, Miss Megan. Thank you for joining me for today's episode of Art Ventures at Home, brought to you by the studios at Gallery North. I'm Miss Megan. Now, some of you might know me from one of my weekly art classes, or maybe you joined us at some point over the past few years for one of our Art Ventures summer programs. But if you haven't met me yet, I hope that you'll come in to the studio once we reopen and maybe join us for one of our workshops or classes. Just come make some art. All right, on the docket for today, we have paper quilling. Hey, paper quilling. Now, paper quilling is an ancient decorative art form. It actually dates as far back as ancient Egypt, but it became more popular in the 16th and 17th centuries when French and Italian nuns began to use it to decorate reliquaries and holy images. There were also these women of leisure who would use it to decorate um, work boxes or cabinets or um, like tea caddies, all sorts of things, anything that they get their hands on and quill for. Um, and what's really cool about quilling is it is just as fun and cool and creative and actually pretty cheap as it was to do back then. All you really need to start a quilling project is some paper. Um, you can use different colors if you like. I have a few different color options that I'm going to be using today. But you can also do paper quilling with just white paper, like the kind that you would find in your copy machine or your printer. Um, it's totally up to you. You are also going to want a pair of scissors. Um, hopefully they will be scissors that are in your size. So if you have little hands, um, try to use little scissors. And if you have bigger hands, you want to use bigger scissors because it'll be more comfortable for you that way. You're also going to want some sort of a cylindrical object that you can wrap your paper around. So you can use a pen or pencil, but today I'm going to be using um, a toothpick. I found that I really enjoy using toothpicks for paper quilling because I can get tight rolls around it and, and have a really tight center um, more so than I can if I'm using a pencil or something a little bit larger. You're also going to need some sort of adhesive. Now I've done a lot of paper quilling using just any sort of traditional glue stick and it is a perfectly great tool for this project. Um, it will dry quickly so you don't have to be super duper patient. It cleans up pretty nicely. It's a good tool all around. But you can also use regular liquid glue. You just may have to be a little bit more patient if you do end up using something like this. Or my personal favorite is Mod Podge. Now 
Mod Podge is great because it dries clear and once you finish your project you can actually apply a thin coat across the entire thing and really seal your project together. So I really like using Mod Podge but like I said any of these options are perfectly fine. You'll do a great job with them. So when you're beginning your very own paper quilling project you want to begin with an idea. You want to know what you're going to start to make. So when I designed this tree, I thought about the fact that I wanted it to be a fruit tree. So I wanted a few different colors and I knew that I wanted it to hang over just a little bit. In fact, I used a reference photo that I found of an orange tree to create the image that I ended up with. Um, but then once you know what you want it to look like and what kinds of shapes are gonna be in it, you wanna start thinking, like breaking down your object into even more exact shapes. So in my case, I knew that the oranges were pretty round, so I knew that I needed to make a circular shape. And I knew that my leaves, I wanted to, I wanted to make them look a little bit more like leaves. So I actually was able to turn a circle like this into a shape more like this and start creating those leaves. So there are dozens, if not hundreds, of different worksheets that you can find online that have a bunch of different shapes that you can create when you're quilling. Um, I recreated one for myself um, to sit in front of me while I was working on my project today. And this one has a bunch of different shapes that I thought might be helpful for the particular projects that I am going to be working on. So I think that the very best way to learn paper quilling is to dive in and start experimenting. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to create your typical little um, cylindrical coil because this would be the base for every other shape you end up creating. But I'm going to show you maybe two or three other little shapes and how you start to modify this circle into a different shape. And then we'll get started and make a project of our own. But I do encourage you to go back and to just keep experimenting with these different shapes and how they can be used to make a project that's really special and unique to you. So. If you've got your supplies ready, let's get started. Now that we've gathered our supplies, we're ready to start our very first quilling project. Um, so I found myself feeling very inspired this morning when I looked outside my door and saw some of these spring flowers starting to bloom. So I'm going to show you today just a few basic techniques that you can use to make your very own spring bouquet. Now, if you decided that you wanted to create a different design, that's fine. These simple shapes that I'm going to show you today will help create the base for almost anything that you might need. And like I said, the very first thing that we need to learn is how to create a simple coil because this will be the beginning of every single shape I show you. Now, if you find that while you are creating your image, you need different shapes than the ones that I'm showing you, you can go online and find yourself um, a worksheet that will have a bunch of different shapes that you can create while quilling um, laid out for you. And all you have to do is sit and do a little bit of experimenting. Um, for instance, I found that if I held my little um, coil over one of these shapes and I used my fingers to start creating the shape that I saw, I was able to figure out almost all of them entirely on my own. So you can feel free to go and do that if you find that you are looking for something a little bit beyond what I'm going to show you. For today, I'm going to begin by showing you a simple coil. So I already pre-cut some of my paper um, today I'm going to be using normal construction paper, um, which many of you may have laying around your house. 
Um, if you don't, though, you could always use paper from your printer or paper from books. Like I created this quilled image a little while ago, and these are actually made from old books that I was going to be getting rid of, and I ripped out the pages and I created my coils that way. But for now, um, I'm just going to show you with this normal construction paper how you can create a simple coil. So the first thing that you want to do is you place your paper down on your cylindrical objects and you hold it there and you begin to roll. And once you've gotten a decent roll started, the paper is going to keep itself in place and you don't have to ver worry very much about doing anything else. You just keep rolling. From this simple coil, I'm going to show you how to create some more of these shapes. So if you wanted to keep just the coil at this point, you would put a little bit of glue right here at the end and you would hold it. So if you use a normal glue stick to do your gluing, you can add it right to the edge, press it down, and hold it for five seconds or so, maybe even as long as 10 seconds. And once you're done, you'll have this nice coil. But if you're looking to start forming some different shapes, what you can do is pull the coil off of your object and you can loosen it up just a little bit and then start to form a shape just by pinching or pressing the paper. So I'm going to start by showing you how to make these teardrops that we'll use for our flower petals. And the way that I made them was I loosened it up quite a bit. I pressed down on one end made it a bit of a, a sharp corner. And then I opened up my glue stick and I added some glue to the ends that is free. And then I pressed it down and held it. Once your paper is feeling secure to your shape, you can let it go and there you are. You have a teardrop. So all of these other shapes are made in exactly the same way. You're just going to pinch in different areas than I just pinched for my initial teardrop shape. So in order to make the leaves, you're going to take your piece of paper and begin to roll it into that cylinder once again. And once your cylinder is completely rolled, you can loosen it up. You can add some glue at this point if you'd like. Hold it down to your shape. And now you can begin to press both ends of your shape. And now you've got something that looks a little bit more like an eyeball. Maybe even like those eyeballs that you would see in um, ancient Egypt. So now that we have three of our basic shapes down, let me show you how I made the tulip or the tulip looking thing. I kind of made up my flowers just a little bit. They were all inspired by things that I've actually seen, but I want to create a bouquet that was very uniquely mine. So to create that shape, I pressed down on my paper, began my cylinder, just like before. And then I let my cylinder loosen up quite a bit. And then I took my glue stick, put a little bit of glue on the end, and this time I started by pressing down on just one side and keeping the rest of my shape more round. Once you've got this like half circle type thing, you can press down even a little bit more 
and pinch the two top corners on that flat side and you'll get a shape that looks more like that. So those are the basic shapes that you need to begin this spring project. You can use the same colors as I did. You can use different colors, or like I said, you can do it all in white and it will be just as lovely. This is your creative process, so let your imagination soar. Now, something that I want you to see is that I don't start gluing down my shapes right away. I'm going to keep them loose and free so that I can start to make decisions about where I want my shapes to go. And that way I can keep moving things around as I want to and create the image that I want. So I'm going to get started making some of these shapes. But one more thing I want to tell you before I begin is that there are many ways that you can create your own strips of paper. Um, I have decided today to use my scissors to cut them. And I could use a ruler and measure out the exact width that I want them all throughout the page, make some lines, cut across the lines, and have very exact shapes. But I actually like how organic it feels when you allow your shapes to kind of end up being at different heights and different sizes. So I played around with that idea and I didn't really stress out making perfectly even strips. But if that's what you would prefer to do, you can use a paper cutter or like I said, you can measure it out and cut along the lines. It's entirely up to you. And all I did was I took a piece of paper, I chose a point at the bottom. Remember that practice makes better. And I ended up with a bunch of strips that look similar to this. And that's what I form my shapes from. So you can go ahead and start cutting up those papers. Or if you already have some papers cut like I do, we can just get started.
dried, I'm ready to hang my very own paper quilled project. I can't wait to see yours. I hope you'll share them with us. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Art Ventures at Home. I hope that you had just as much fun creating these beautiful images as I did. I would love to see what you guys came up with. So post your pictures in the comments. And if you want to stay on top of what's going on with the studio, press like and hit subscribe. Hope to see you all soon. Bye, guys.